Hello, it's Mr. O'Mara here again to talk a little bit more about how to do language analysis and in particular the VCE task. One of the very common and persuasive things that writers do to persuade a reader is the use of figures. At a basic level, this is just citing a number or referring to a number that lets the reader know that we are talking about something kind of accurate and factual. So you could say a lot of people saw this movie uh, as a way of showing that it's popular. It would be more convincing if you're able to say, you know, in Geelong, 40,000 people saw this movie. Or, this movie did $30 million in the box office on the opening weekend. Having a specific figure works because it makes it seem real and factual and not just kind of general and maybe that's true. Another common form of figures used is percentages. So you might say, or proportions, you might say, you know, one in five people in Geelong have seen this movie already. Or, you know, 20% of Australians have seen it. Or 80% of people quite liked it. So, at these, you'll see this sprinkled through persuasive articles all the time. 70% of locals will save 100 minutes a week because of McBuckle's Bridge. So, you've got the 70% and you've also got the 100. Whenever you see numbers being used, and almost all persuasive pieces will contain some kind of numbers, then that's the technique or the uh, approach that that person is using. Another thing that we use for evidence is expert opinion. Expert opinion is somebody who the reader will believe knows what they're talking about. So there are different there are different ways of being regarded as an expert. One is to be the official, the person who's put in charge of it and has some kind of authority that goes with their title. So you know, if somebody is the head of the AFL, then you would expect them to know what they were talking about when they were talking about changes to the game. Whereas if you're quoting from me, you could probably assume that I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to AFL. The other ways that you find experts are when you talk about people's qualifications. So you might have somebody saying, you know, I have a master's degree or a doctorate in this subject, you know, in biochemistry, and I can tell you that this type of paint is dangerous. So that's one type type of expertise is from qualifications, the earlier one is from title and also from experience. You know, if people say, I've been, you know, I've been a teacher for 42 years and I can tell you that this is the case. Again, they are putting themselves up as an expert and their weight is meant to carry more, more, sorry, their word is meant to carry more weight with you than say mine would. So, for instance, the chief surveyor of this region confirmed that McBuckles Bridge would last 300 years. So we've got two types of evidence in there. One is we've got expert opinion from the chief surveyor, and also we've got it lasting 300 years. So it won't just last a while, and this is much stronger than if it just said, some fella said the bridge would last a while. And here's another example. According to a study by McAllister University, so again, it's somewhere with a reputation for knowledge, that kind of official authority, the bridge will bring in $3, I've written $3 extra business to town, I meant $3 million. How about I go and fix that? Let's, um, let's see if I can do that on the spot. Three million extra um, dollars extra business to our town. That's a bit more persuasive. Just three dollars isn't really very persuasive at all. So anyhow, that's how writers use, exp um, not expertise, evidence to convince their readers.